Welcome back. This week, our Fans' Choice Game of the Week poll. You can call it Mr. 3000 with over 3000 votes coming into the 9 and 10 News Facebook page. And you're winning with 45% of the votes. Petoskey Cadillac Girls Basketball. Some highlights from the Big North Showdown. That also means the fans chose Shannon McGratton to read the highlights. Jeff, the last time Petoskey and Cadillac Girls met on the court, the Lady Vikings drove home a 43-40 win. Tonight, sitting on a two-game losing streak, Cadillac hopes its home crowd will carry it to a season sweep while the Northmen try to improve on their 2-5 conference record. Final minute of the first quarter, Lily Kingma puts the Northmen on the board with a triple 5-3 Cadillac after eight minutes of play. Three-point game, 90 seconds into the second quarter. Michaela Johns takes her time and drops in a three, extending the Vikings' lead. Showing her range again, Kingma. She makes it a 15-8 game toward the end of the first half. Out of the locker room, Jenna Irway drives down the lane and drops in a dose. Then Alana Hess finds Lisa Metzger. Shot under the hoop is good for a 13-point advantage. Petowski's Isabel Anderson uses her speed to make her second straight bucket. But on Cadillac side, Hess. Joins in on the scoring fun, tossing back a shot and her team's 42-25 win over Petoskey. Later in the night, the boys meet for the first time since their December 19th quadruple overtime matchup. Out of the opening tip-off, Petoskey gets to work. Evan Whitmore goes to the hoop for the first two points. Cadillac shows off on defense shortly after Lewis Finch comes up with the ball and passes to Andrew Emmington. Vikings with their first lead. Back and forth continues. Northman go inside to Nick Mesner. He hits the two down low. Quinn Crago tries to get the turnaround shot to go. Finch picks up the rebound and another Cadillac lead. The Vikings hang tough to win 48-36. In Pine River, a win for the Bucks would tie them with the Rangers for second place in the Highland Conference. Start of the third quarter, Manton up two. Mason Powell snatches the rebound, goes long to Mitchell McDonald. He finds Brandon Folks for the 30-all tie. Then Manton's Wyatt Baker runs into the pass, stays outside, puts the Rangers back on top. Two minutes into the quarter, McDonald three-point turn into a jumper. Bucks down 35-32. Now an eight-point game. Chandler Shazri hits the bucket and one. Rangers hold on to second place, winning 75-70. Other scores involving Highland teams tonight. McBain stays on top of the Highland Conference, topping Beale City 74-62, while Lake City scored 90 of its 26 points against Marion. And now for a look at a trio of Ski Valley boys. I we'll toss it over to Eric Lloyd. Thanks, Shannon. Let's start at the top. Exclusive game coverage here. Bel Air's 10-2 on the year. One loss in conference. Nine game winning streak. But none of that means anything when they head down the road to Mancelona and take on the Ironmen at home. Picking it up with less than three minutes left in the game, Mancelona down seven. That is until senior Griffin Bohr slices, cuts, and pivots his way through the Eagles. Ironmen down five. Next possession, Gabe Merriweather looking to avoid the foul, but instead dribbles it off his knee. Doors wide open for the Ironmen, looking to take advantage, but Dingman may have crossed over one too many times. Hayden Nepoth with the steal and draws the foul, but the bucket would not count. Hits one of the three th or free throws. Then with less than a minute left, Nepoth to Charlie Rainey. So quick, so smooth. And Eagles soar with it, winning 52 to 46. That one loss for Bel Air, that was to Onaway. Cardinals sitting dead center of the pack, but can leapfrog Mancelona in the standings with a win over Pelston tonight. Off the steal, Onaway's going to get out in transition. Great pass from Cortez Washington up to Joe Sigsby for the easy bucket. Now we're going to get some more from Sigsby right here on the run. This time he's going to find his spot, he's going to pull up, and he's going to drop the mid-range jumper. Pelston down big, but they're trying to get something going. Josh Rubinsky with the teardrop J from the corner for two. Time winding down at the end of the first half, and it's going to be Cortez Washington once again falling away, beating the buzzer. Onaway getting the best of Pelston, 89 to 28. And as for Gaylord St. Mary's, their only win the, was the first game of the season. Central Lake, they haven't won since the first game of 2015, and somebody has to win tonight. Both teams, they came out firing. The Snowbirds, Drew Long, he's going to get St. Mary's on the board with the long two-pointer. Nice form. Next time down, they're looking for more, but the Trojans' Isaac Mortensen has other plans. He gets the steal. He's off to the races. The last man back fouls him. He's still able to get a go, and he'd make the foul shot. Second verse, same as the first. Mortensen again on defense, on with the steal. Nobody had fouled this time. Easy layup. 
Now the Trojans with the set offense. Spalding down low, kicks it out to Chris Corbett. Even with that taped up thumb, he nails the three. Trojans defend home court 57 to 37. And apologies to in, or Joe Berg and Inland Lake. The only Ski Valley game we couldn't get to tonight. Cardinals won by three though, 61 to 58. <sighs> All these overtimes are exhausted. I need to grab a seat. For Sports Overtime, I'm Eric Lloyd. Thanks, Eric. I'll sub back in for triple overtime. Six more games on the docket. Four from the hardwood, two more from the ice.